And a pleasant good evening to you and yours, and welcome to the Brevard Sports Network and a special presentation tonight of the girls' Cape Coast Conference Championship between the top-seeded Edgewood Red Wolves and the second-seeded Veer Hawks. Good evening, everybody. I'm Alan Slaughterzinski, and it's a pleasure to be with you here tonight. Uh, even though it's 55 degrees, it feels like it's 14 here at Vieira Regional Park. Wouldn't miss this for the world. We've got two of uh, the absolute best soccer teams here in Brevard. And before we tell you all about these two teams, let's tell you about who was able to sponsor this tonight so that we could bring this great action to you. We want to thank Cartama Ramos Crafting tonight. Uh, if Cartama looks familiar to you, it's from HGTV's House Hunters. She's one of the few realtors ever selected to be on that show twice. Uh, Cartama has sold millions of dollars in real estate in Brevard, mainly right here in Vieira. She's passionate about helping others find their dream home and treats each transaction as if it were own personal property. No task is ever too big for Cartama and her willingness to go above and beyond for her clients has resulted in repeat clients and many, many referrals. She has experience with relocations and has helped many fellow veterans, doctors, and families relocate to the Brevard area. Get in touch with Cartama Ramos Crafton, a broker with Dale Sorensen Real Estate. As your possible realtor, Cartama Ramos Crafton is committed to making sure you get the best service possible. Give her a call at 321-704-3925 or get in touch using the online contact form at www.cartamawillsellyourhome.com. All right, let's get down to brass tacks here and tell you all about these two fantastic teams. The Vieira Hawks come in at 11-1. and one. They are under the guidance and tutelage of eighth-year manager Cal Dixon. Coach Dixon, all he does is win, win, win. No, I won't sing the song, but he's 106-25 and 11 in his eight years. He's got another outstanding team here this year that's given up just one goal all season. That's right. You heard me right. One goal all season. And they've scored 43 that's a plus 42 in goal differential. Uh, we'll tell you about some of the leaders on the team individually coming up. But how about the Edgewood Red Wolves? Edgewood is 8-1-1 one one this year with wins over teams, including the number one ranked team in the state and Pontra Vedra. They are led by first-year head coach Kevin Smith. The Red Wolves come in to tonight's game with a 38 game match winning streak against Brevard County teams. So there you have it. Apologize for the view here tonight, but uh, we couldn't play over at Hawk Stadium tonight where the game was scheduled to be played because obviously we've been under a deluge in the last week. So the fields are an absolute mess. So hopefully by the time the district championships come next week, We'll be over there because Cartama has also sponsored that as well. We are set for the kickoff here on Brevard Sports Network, and it is an absolute pleasure to be with you here tonight. So this is the view we'll get here tonight, and we are underway in the Cape Coast Conference Championship game as Edgewood Controls early. This is number two. That's Liz Corrigan with it. Down in the far corner, that's Bolin. Olivia Bolin. And, boy, what a job she has done this year. You'll see the throw in come. There it is. In front. Tested early through the box. Shot wide right. And squandered opportunity early. Corrigan just missed there. The Hawks keeper. It's a little chilly out here tonight. Did I mention that? The Hawks leading keeper this year has been Kendall Mix. 41 saves. The only loss for Vieira this year was against Merritt Island in a game you saw right here on Brevard Sports Network. Andrea Toledo is coming off for a second. Not sure why, but obviously an issue. Let's 
that is indeed Kendall Mix in goal. And as you take a look out there as well, let's tell you a little bit about uh, Gianna Busey leads the team with 13 goals. Adele Baritsky is second on the team with seven. That's Vieira right here in your living room. It comes. That was Megan Nadel with it. Crossed by the far touch line, giving chase over there is the Hawks. The Hawks are in the black jerseys, and they'll move left to right on your handheld device. Edgewood in the white, obviously moving from right to left. And Edgewood again going to try to put pressure on that Vieira defense, which has been so good this year, allowing just one tally. Edgewood's going to try to come early, and they're going to try to come often. They are led in goals by Gigi Lopez and Andrea Toledo, who both have nine. Olivia Bowen second on the squad with eight. Here comes the first corner of the night. You can see there on the right-hand side of your screen. I can't tell who's doing it. My eyes aren't as good as they used to be. But in front and just headed to the left of the goal. And Kendall will run around the long way to get the ball. Nope, she'll grab the extra one behind the cage. We've got the boys Cape Coast Conference Championship for you tomorrow night from Merritt Island. That'll be Vieira and, well, Merritt Island. Nicely played ahead, but the defense from Edgewood is there. They've only allowed six goals all year, and they've played some really stout competition this season. Like I said, Pontravedra, just to name one. Let me back up a little bit. Everybody's going to get car sick watching the camera move left to right. I apologize. I know it's a distance away, but the change in venue has forced this particular location to broadcast from. So my apologies. I do feel bad about this. Normally not our standard. And Edgewood again, but defensively that time, the Hawks. Thwart the pressure. Megan Nadel down there once again getting a foot on the ball. This will be a throw in for the Red Wolves. Nicely done by Vieira on the throw in, but Edgewood still controls. This is Corrigan, and Corrigan's shot. Oh, that was over the outstretched hand of Mix and, and a corner battle for it, and it goes out as... Ab uh, Abigail Tomberlin will throw it in. She does so. And played out by the Vieira defense. This will come near your living room. And this is Nina Lopez with it. And she'll play the ball back to Steinmetz. And Lopez again with it. The Lopez sisters, two phenomenal soccer players. And that'll go out. Played ahead. And there's a shot and a save by Mix. Nice job. Save number one on the night for Miss Mix. And that's 42 on the year. She puts her drop kicks at when that ball actually hit the ground first. Played ahead. Vieira has not had any offensive pressure yet. Maybe this is the opportunity, but it's played down and back and played out by the keeper, Emma Ramsey, who's had herself a season as well. Ramsey. She's got 50 saves this season for head coach Kevin Smith. This is Corrigan with it. 
Every time I see Corrigan, she grows like a half an inch. Outstanding soccer player. I was tall in high school, but I, I couldn't, I, athletically, I, I couldn't, I was like a puppy until I could grow into my height. Not, not Corrigan, she, she's an athlete for sure. Nicely played in and nicely defended. That's Bolin who does a little bit of everything and here comes Lopez and she feeds it ahead. And Mix is going to come out and try to get to it. Got to be careful. And that's a good job by Haley Mix because knocking at the door was Gigi Lopez. And a quick throw in by Edgewood. And Vieira well with it. This is Brianna McCain. And taken away nicely by Nina Lopez. Nina across the midfield stripe with it. Over to Corrigan. Lopez again will feed it back, but to the wrong color jersey. And a push there by Steinmetz. And again, good defense at the midline by, that's Eva McMenny Hong. She leads the Hawks in assists this year. This will be a throw in from the far touch line. Corrigan battling over there against Natalia Espling. Espling does a good job defending Corrigan and Edgewood back on the attack here. Nicely done there by Abigail Tomberlin to keep that in. Lopez with a little slide there. Chipped ahead, nearly a handball, but not fed ahead. And in the corner as Isabel Bolin gives chase. Bolin tries to feed it in the center slot area. No good. And Vieira's defense plays it well. Another throw in for Edgewood. Tomberlin. And chipped out. This is Piper Miller with a foot on it. As Tomberlin plays it back to Steinmetz. And giving fits over there for Vieira is Caroline Detweiler. And Vieira with trying to create an offensive opportunity, just haven't been able to do so yet. That's Brianna McCain. McCain back in the top slot area. But immediately two Edgewood defenders on the ball. Three that time. But Vieira fights through it. Great job by Avery Canales. Canales. Avery Canales, my apologies. And out, and but no, it's not saved by Detweiler and the Hawks trying to play pressure down low. No foul called and played back up, but not out, so to speak. As Corrigan comes in, and Corrigan with her long strides there. Works it out. Plays it ahead, but it'll trickle across the touch line, and that'll be Vieira Ball. No idea how much time is left. Everybody can guess with me. I imagine we'll have a water break somewhere, and that'll kind of give me the gist of where we are. Edgewood looking to win their third straight Cape Coast Conference Championship. The last time Edgewood lost to a Brevard County team was in January of 2021. That was West Shore.
couldn't find the ball. My apologies. I imagine that'll happen once or twice tonight. No, no whistles. The refs letting them play. You gotta like it. It's a championship game. Take call the egregious ones, but leave the ticky tack stuff alone. And that appears to be what we're going to get here as the ball goes out. You never want to see a game like this decided by ticky tack fouls. And Vieira will try to play it it. As Edgewood back and then up again. Played ahead. There's a trip. No call. Yep, there's the call. I was like, okay, that was a little. It's <laughs> like, I get it, but that was definitely a trip. <laughs> Once again, we want to thank Cartama Ramos Crafton of Dale Sorensen Realty for sponsoring not just this game tonight for Vieira, but she is going to sponsor the district tournament and two state games as well. Nice shot and played. Oh, that's trouble. And for a goal, Edgewood gets on the board. And that was trouble from the start. I know the assist will go to Steinmetz, but you could just tell the way that ball was drifting, drifting. It was going to create issues, and it did, and it's one to nothing, Edgewood. So we'll find out who scored that goal. Get the score fixed here. No goal. Okay, they say no goal. All right. Not sure why. All right. Did they say why? What's that? Okay. Following the keeper is what they called. That's big. Vieira's got to capitalize now. So a goal wiped off the board. I don't like calling goals. I can't tell who scored them anyway. <laughs> Talking to Craig Bailey, simply the best. And right now, Coach Kevin Smith wants a explanation. I'm not sure he's satisfied with it, but he got it. <laughs> and that's my fault Edgewood I apologize because I was just talking about the officiating and wouldn't you know it the official out there has everybody gathered around explaining But it's no goal. And Mix will play it. She did a nice job off the initial kick, but that ball was just floating around in the crease. And that's, that's a tough ball. With so... This is Eva McMenny Hong here, and she'll give it up to Gianna Bussey. This could be a dangerous kick here. Vera sets up nicely in front. And it is a dangerous kick and scooped up by Ramsey, and she'll play it out. Puts her. That ball's not going to travel very far tonight. It probably feels like a brick they're kicking. Corrigan again. Oh, 
Lopez works it in front, or tried to work it in front, I should say. Edgewood has had most of the sustained offensive pressure. Vieira had about a minute and a half of it. Again, no, I don't have any time available to me here. And this will be a throw in by the Red Wolves. And played back to the keeper, Ramsey. Corrigan lets it go. And played nicely by the Veer defender back to the keeper, Mix. Coming up tomorrow again, it's the Boys Cape Coast Conference Championship live from the O-Dome at Merritt Island. It'll be Vieira Hawks and the Merritt Island Mustangs doing battle. The Vieira boys have quite an unbeaten streak against Brevard County on the line as well. Now, uh, for the issue with the Lady Red Wolves, it's 38 games they haven't lost to a Brevard County team. The Vieira Hawk boys are a little bit different because in their 30-plus match streak, they have a tie in there. So you have to call it an unbeaten streak. They tied Holy Trinity last year 2-2. Two two, and that's the only blemish. And there's the water break. So we'll step aside here. Halfway through the first half, no score from Vieira Regional Park. All right, maybe not the water break. Looked like everybody was walking off. Heard a whistle and everybody was heading to the sidelines. Here's what we're going to do in the second half. There, we ha I have a clock that I'm going to put up. I'm not going to stop it because I can't, but I'm just going to let it run so that way we have some idea of how much time there is in the half. Substitution. Taylor Reed checks in. And a goal kick coming from Ramsey. She plays it. Over to Piper Miller. Miller to the near touch line here. Dangerous passing the ball back and forth down low. Played out. And Vieira will play it back in. Brianna. That's a dangerous pass, but gets past McMenny Hong. And Corrigan, again, leads the rush. And thwarted nicely by the Vieira defense. This cannot end in a tie, so we would regular season games can end in a tie. This one cannot go to shootouts if necessary. Shot and Mix scoops it up for third save of the night. That's a good boot right there. Brandon McCain. Ooh, just to the right side of the stick there.
Or was it? It was, because it's a throw-in. Here we go. Opportunity here for Vieira. And that just trickles out of bounds, and Ramsey will pick it up. I'm not saying anything. The whistle blew. Now I definitely see everybody walking off now. I definitely think this is the water break. All right. I believe we have reached the halfway mark of the first half. We'll step aside. We'll be right back. No score between the Red Wolves and the Hawks. All right, since halves are 40 minutes, what I did was I put a 20-minute clock up. Now, that's not accurate, but it's close. So we'll keep it there, and we'll just let it run, and we'll have a roundabout idea of where we are in the half. No score here. Once again, we want to thank our fantastic sponsor here tonight, Cartam Cartama Ramos Crafting, 321-704-3925. Please make sure if you're looking to sell your home and relocate or buy your home, you contact Cartama. www.letcartama sell your Cartama will sell your home. dot com. www.cartama will sell your home. dot com. And here comes Vieira. And nicely taken away there. By Nina Lopez. The Hawks with an opportunity there. But Nina just came up behind Eva McMenny Hong. And took the ball away. This is Corrigan. Couldn't find it for a minute as Isabel Bolin picks it up. This is McMenny Hong again. She feeds it across. Here's going to have to get some shots on goal here. Kind of saw this with Edgewood when they played, excuse me, Merritt Island. As the two teams went back and forth for about the first part of the first half, and then Edgewood exploded for four goals in the middle portion of the game. Of course, Merritt Island was down a player for the second half of that one following a red card, but
got a little chilly out tonight. That's for sure. I need to quit complaining about the cold because if any of my family logs are from Baltimore, they're going to be highly disappointed in me. This is 55 degrees up there. It's like 20. As Vieira will get the throw in here. Again, the clock is approximate. Oh, taken away very nicely there by Abigail Tomberlin. Tomberlin will play in front. Mix has got to come, and she does, and that's a great headsy play by the keeper. Miss Kendall Mix there with a great job. That ball was, could have ended up in a, as a goal there. And this will be Vieira ball here. Head coach Cal Dixon in his eighth year took over as the head coach the year after Courtney Baines Lundy won her second state championship. Here comes Edgewood, and there's Vieira. Nice job avoiding a handball on that. And the Red Wolves will give chase, as McMenny Hong does as well for the Hawks. And this is a corner ball chase here, and knocked out. Should be Vieira ball, and it will be. So the Hawks with a set piece coming here in an opportunity. Last one didn't go so well on the throw in from the near corner here. And Edgewood is all over it. Like Minnie Hong plays it. Little push off there, no call. Shot. Oh, what a save by Ramsey on a near potential goal, but that's a great shot by Vieira and a great save by Ramsey. Great play by both sides there. Vieira putting some pressure on now. That's their first shot of the game officially. misstep there and a throw in right from your living room floor and this is McManny Hong with it and she's going to play it down low but Nice job, and that, that's trouble off the top of the pipe. That floater nearly dropped in. It hit the top of the pipe, and Vieira with some good pressure here in the latter stages of the first half. Nearly two opportunities. Wasn't much Ramsey could do about that one. Just hope and pray it hit the top, and it did.
Great little chip shot there. In weather like this, when it's cold out, at least Florida cold out, and that cold air gets down into your lungs, generally good, well-conditioned teams tend to play a little better deeper into halves. So we'll see which team that is. This is Corrigan. Whistle, and a foul, and this will be an Edgewood ball. Again, the time is approximate. Here's the kick. Nicely played out by Espling and the Hawks. Down the far touch line. Fed in front. Given chase and played out. This will be a Vieira throw in. As Isabel Bol Isabella Bolin launched it. And at the midfield line is Sophie Boss. Boss plays it ahead and picked off there by the Red Wolves. Played back into Vieira zone, but all over it was Mackenzie Ellison. And Edgewood ends up with the ball again. Down in the far right corner in front, Corrigan with a chipper over the net. All right, here we go. Not sure what this is going to be here. Corner kick. It must have went off of Vieira Hawk here. So we got a corner kick coming. I did not see that go off of Vieira player. So my apologies. So here we go. Set piece coming here. Off the corner. Header. Won't go. Shot in front. Oh, my. Kendall Mix. Mix is that. And it stays scoreless. Great save. I apologize for the long silences, but I'm solo tonight, so I want to make sure I keep the camera on the action as well. So and that'll be the goal kick, I believe. Or a corner. Corner, another corner coming, looks like. No. Yep. So here we go with another corner. At the tail end of the last one, Kendall Mix came up huge. And let's see if uh, what Edgewood has up their sleeve here. Left-footed corner in front. The header's no good. And it goes out to the right of the net. Mix retrieves. And we play on.
goal kick. And that'll cross the goal line. And it'll be Edgewood ball here. With somewhere between six and about eight minutes to play here in the first half. No score. We had a goal, but it was nullified. An Edgewood goal nullified. The referee said they were following the keeper. So goal was taken off the board. Lopez now trying to beat two Vier defenders. She only beats two. She beats three. And away goes Lopez. That's Nina. And Edgewood trying to get something going here. Shot from the corner or to the corner off the foot of Isabel Bolin. He's scooped up by Mix. And Kendall has done a terrific job keeping this one scoreless. And another great boot. Throw in for the Hawks coming. Set to throw this in will be Mackenzie Ellison. Nice job just to play that out because coming was Olivia Bolin. Bowling, nice touch pass. Little triangle set up here. Over to Nina Lopez. Lopez tried to feed it back, but nicely played for a moment for a moment there by Kathy Orr. And Lopez will play it across. And it'll go out of bounds off a of hawk and a throw in coming by Ashlyn Wimmer. And that'll be a goal kick. Mix has not only had some good saves tonight, but she's had some excellent kicks from the crease as well. It's a low line drive that didn't quite make its target. I jinxed her. Tell you what, the ball boy does a terrific job. Back in action. That'll cross the Edgewood goal line. As Ramsey gives chase. Emma Ramsey. I think I'm going to take the halftime and warm up. And 
and shot wide left. Probably about three minutes to go here in the first half. As Emma Ramsey will look to put, well, I guess not. She'll just slide it over to her defender. Played back to Piper Miller. Nicely done up the touchline, but taken away by Vieira. She played right out of her shoe. There's her shoe right there on the turf. That belongs to Gianna Lopez, who's playing with one shoe on and one shoe off. She retrieves it. And this is a foot race to the ball. And nice job, good hustle by both players. That's Carolyn Detweiler over there. With time winding down, a huge corner opportunity here for Vieira. I believe this is their second one of the match. In front, Ramsey grabs it and cleared out by the Edgewood defense. Ramsey had it for a split second, but that was a great kick, great corner. You see, our time has expired. That means we're getting close to the end of the first half here. Boy, a goal here for Vieira. If they can get it before this whistle blows with the ball down here already would be ultra big. In oh, the one-timer. She tried the one-timer. Just wasn't positioned correctly. And here comes Edgewood. Same principle applies. If Edgewood could put one in the back of the net, but nicely stolen away by Vieira. Edgewood again on the defense. Here's the throw in. That's the half. So we've reached the half with the score. No score. We'll be back to start the second half in about 10 minutes here on Brevard Sports Network.
Second half underway here on Brevard Sports Network. Put a little over 40 minutes up on the clock so that we can try to keep as close as time as we can. Once again, I can't stop it because I'd have to turn the camera sideways and I can't do that. Not at least while action's going on. So, again, no score here on Brevard Sports Network. And once again, we want to thank our fantastic sponsor tonight, Cartama Ramos Crafton of Dale Sorensen Real Estate. Had a couple of close calls in the first half, but nothing transpires. The Hawks will now move from right to left and Edgewood from left to right. Vieira and Edgewood doing battle for the 2024 Cape Coast Conference Championship. Edgewood looking to extend their 38-match unbeaten streak against Brevard County teams. And scooped up by Ramsey. See what halftime adjustments, if any, were made by Kevin Smith and Cal Dixon. I think the biggest halftime adjustment you make is make sure they don't get cold. Because it's cold. Temperature at game time was 55 degrees. Now, if you're watching from up north, I know, I know. You'd kill for 55 degrees. But, yeah, not so much here. And again, I apologize for the long pauses in talking. As I'm working this one solo today, we've also got Cape Coast Conference semifinal boys basketball. Doubleheader Caleb and Chase are in the warm confines of the Satellite High School gym, bringing you two basketball games tonight. I got a feeling the only goal of this game is going to win it. Unless we go to PKs. And that will be played out on the far touch line. And this will be Edgewood ball. Thus far in the story of the night for Vieira. Uh, it's got to be their keeper. She's done an outstanding job. Kendall Mix, a couple of big saves in this one tonight. And Ramsey for Edgewood with a big one as well there at the end of the first half. That's Carolyn Detweiler down there giving chase. And Edgewood What's up, buddy? Where's the ball? Oh there it is. All right, here comes a corner. Vieira. Couple of nice corners so far, putting pressure. That's another good kick in front, and that one off the side of the foot. That one's not, but it goes off the side of the net, and Ramsey will put it in play. And here come the Red Wolves. Oh, that one shot hard off of Corrigan. The 
This will be Natalia Esplink coming into your screen. And that's headed right back in, and Natalia gives chase. Nicely done in front, but a great defensive play coming from the backside that time was Gianna Busey, and what a job. Because you don't know where that one would have ended up, certainly in the center slot area. And this will be a corner for Edgewood and an opportunity here. Their corners, not as precise as Vieira's tonight, but here it comes. That one's a good one. In front, and again, Kendall Mix saves the day. Literally. That was the best corner of the night from Edgewood. Where'd he go? What are we doing here? Oh, there it is. I couldn't find the ball. Oh, nice job. That was Abigail Tomberlin over there with that sliding tackle. And Edgewood maintains possession as a result. This will be Edgewood ball here with probably about 32, 33 minutes to play in regulation. Again, we cannot tie here tonight. As far as I know. In front. Oh, that goes off the crossbar shot and a goal. And Edgewood cashes in. That comes off the foot. I saw that one. That was Gianna Lopez with the goal. And Edgewood gets on the board first. And as they take a 1-0 lead. Nice finish. The ball bounced off the crossbar, and there was absolutely nothing once it had come back off onto the foot of Lopez that Mix could do. And now Vieira's got to put the pressure on because this Edgewood team, they, get, they score them in bunches for, for Gianna. That's her 10th goal of the year. Well, that was pretty slick. Stepped around and in front. A little too late, but a nice play by Gianna Busey. Both of these teams going to the state tournament, regardless of, you know, what happens the rest of the year. I mean, obviously, Vieira wants to win their district championship. Edgewood wants to win their district championship. But they're going to both be playing in state tournament action. 
Vieira is 33rd in the state. Edgewood is 12th or 13th in the state. The nemesis for Edgewood, Benjamin. Can they get past Benjamin? Of course, Vieira last year, regional. I believe they went to the Final Four. A nice chip. Andrea Toledo there, and this will be <laughs> and obviously the girls are not happy with the call here. And this will be a kick coming up for Vieira here. Set to take it is going to be Gianna Busey. His parents kind of mocking the officials a little bit, but in a very respectful manner, if you will. Uh-oh. He just issue her a yellow card. No, that's his whistle. Okay. He actually moved the ball back 13 inches and picked up by Ramsey. And she kicks what must feel like a center block. One nothing on a goal from a corner by Gigi Lopez. Her tenth of the year on a ricochet off the crossbar that came back down into the crease and Lopez buried it. And that's all we've got thus far. Will it be enough? Substitutions, I believe, coming in. I think. No? I don't know what he's doing over there. Vieira. This is kind of like how it went in the first half, too. It was Edgewood applying pressure early in the half, and then Vieira late. Nice job by Corrigan to keep that in. In the corner, pushed out by Vieira. And this will be Edgewood ball. What? Wow. Huh.
Elizabeth Steinmetz was given chase and lost it. And this will be Espling with the throw in. Vieira with a chance here. And Edgewood. And, and that's going to be... I can't tell if it's in the box or not. If it is, it's obviously a penalty kick. If it's not. Yeah, indeed it is. And who's going to take it? So Vieira with a chance here. And that's a yellow card given to Steinmetz. She was not happy. And taking this kick is going to be Gianna Busey. Gianna leads the team in goals with 13. This would be number 14. And none would be bigger. Steinmetz has got to come off. So here we go, penalty kick coming. Hawks with a golden opportunity to tie this up. Gianna Busey on this one. There you see number 13 just to your right of the four Edgewood white sweaters. Ramsey, Emma Ramsey, and Gianna Busey here in the Cape Coast Conference Championship. Busey, shot, and what? Oh, the follow is a goal. And it's tied. Who got the follow? Who was it? Gianna did, did she? Gianna Busey with the follow. And it's 1-1. Nice job. A lot of times off that initial save, you don't follow. And she did. And the Hawks have tied it up. And Gianna Busey with her 14th of the year. And we're right back where we started. Tied up this time, though, at 1. Ramsey made the initial save and then laid it out. And Busey cashed in. And we are underway here following the tying goal by Vieira here with probably what's about 24 minutes to play. And that'll be, see what he calls here, corner, I believe it is. So an opportunity here for Edgewood on a corner. Scored off the last one, sort of, kind of. Nice high arcing corner in front. The header goes over the net. And we, are, we stay tied at one.
just the seventh goal Edgewood's given up all year for Vieira, just the second goal they've allowed. Once again, we want to thank Cartama. Cartama will sell your home.com and mix with another save. We're at least getting close to the second half water break. This is Corrigan. And we got substitutions. And the player is down. Sure. It's a cramp or tough to cramp in the cold. But our score is one to one. Don't like to show injury, so that's why the camera's pointing in the other direction. Once again, Cor Thomas Ramos crafted the one of the only realtors to ever be selected to appear on HT. HGTV's House Hunters. My lips are starting to get cold. Cartama has sold millions of dollars in real estate in Brevard, mainly in Vieira. She services Vieira, West Melbourne, Cocoa Beach, and Rockledge. Vieira Hawk player is up and will be piggybacked off. Uh, the, if you're interested in selling your home, nobody better. Get in touch with Cartama, Ramos Craft, and a broker with Dale Sorensen Real Estate. As your realtor, Cartama, uh, Cartama is committed to making sure you get the best service possible. 321-704-3925 or get in touch at www.cartamawillsellyourhome.com. We'll reset the clock coming out of the water break. But this will be a throw-in for Edgewood. Corrigan with a nice shot, but it tails to the right and across the goal line. And... Kendall Mix will pick it up. Kendall's had a great night here tonight. Could easily be a 3-1 game. Chipped the head and headed back out. Veer going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the team many consider to be the best in Brevard in the last three years, the Edgewood Lady Red Wolves. Their 38 and 38 win streak record against Brevard County teams would speak to that. In front, battling. Almost got the Corrigan. Good defense by Vieira, and that'll trickle out. And it'll be Vieira ball as Espling will throw it in. A lot of these girls play together in club as well, but out here tonight, 
if they're wearing a white jersey or a black jersey, they want a Cape Coast Conference championship, and they're going to battle until it's time, until the final whistles. And here comes a throw in. Mix with the line drive. Played back down as Edgewood gives chase. And that'll cross the goal line. And another goal kick coming. And that is the second half water break with our score. Edgewood 1, Vieira 1. All right, welcome back here. Vieira Regional Park. Alan Slaughterzinski with you here on Brevard Sports Network. 1-1 is the score. Now we got the clock set at about 22, 22 and a half minutes. That's because I can't stop it, so we'll let it roll. Gianna Lopez... And a couple of Giannis with goals, Busey and Busey for Vieira and Lopez for Edgewood. And we are underway with the second half of the second half. Tried to shoot that one. Angle that one towards the corner, but no go. Is McManny Hong, who had an active first half, but oh, nice shot in front. Nobody was there, though. It was a golden opportunity for Vieira. That nearly hit Miss Lopez in the face, and that would hurt because it's cold. Played ahead. And we have an injured Red Wolf down. Played out. Yeah. 
And the injured Red Wolf is the man, uh, Andre Toledo, but she's up. Caught, caught one in the shin there, the ankle. As Gianna Lopez will throw the ball in here, and there's a look at Gianna. Actually, she will not. It will be Ashlyn Wimmer. Minnie Hong again. It's a great job by her to dig down deep there in front. That's a beautiful feed in front. Absolutely gorgeous. Nobody was there. Second time she's done it. Catherine Orr. Stolen away. That's a turnover in the neutral zone. If there is such a thing in soccer. <laughs> Ooh, hard contact in the corner. Refs let him play on. Played up the far touch line and back down by Edgewood. Time is about, it's approximate, but it's close on the scoreboard. And a goal kick coming. It's with ball. Quickly back in with it. And McMinnie Hong steals it away and she feeds it down the near touch line here. Nice job by the Redwoods, but played out of bounds as Mackenzie Ellison throws it in. She gets it back to Sophie Boss. McMenny Hong again doing battle with Ashlyn Wimmer. And that time, Wimmer gets the better of it as the shot deflects off and into the hands of Emma Ramsey. Good boot by Emma, and that stung. Oh, goodness, that stung. And that stung again. Woo! Avery Canlis caught one flush on the top part of the exposed leg area there. One to one. Two Giannis with the goals. Young lady stretching out what appears to be a cramp. I can't imagine cramping in the cold like this. If I ever did, I, I just, oof. And Ashley Wimber's going to have to come off, and we're going to have to get a substitute on, and we do. And it's going to be number five, Taylor Reed, the freshman. Big spot for the freshman here. And she throws it in. Eva McMinnie Hong with a good job here. 
And that'll cross the near touch line. It'll be Vieira Ball. And I would imagine that Mackenzie Ellison will throw it in. Vieira's got to be careful here because if you watch Edgewood play soccer, this is what they do. They press, they press, they press, they lean on you, and finally something breaks for them, and they generally cash in when that opportunity comes up. Shot, and that'll trickle, not trickle, that's drilled over top the net, and we stay scoreless, but that's what makes them so successful. They feed off of other teams' mistakes. They're so good in transition. And Vieira has got to be careful in the latter stages of this second half. And they got to be cautious of that. And, well, they're pretty talented, too. Stolen away. Nice job by Vieira defensively there. But there to make sure it doesn't go any further is Andrea Toledo. Toledo into the top left slot area. And this will be a free kick coming here. and an opportunity for Edgewood. Ball spotted on the left-hand side of your screen. Good ball, header just missed, Corgan. Just missed it. I mean, just missed it. She knows it. She, she couldn't jump any higher, that's for sure. And again... And again, here, here's what we were just talking about this. Oh, hits Mix right in the chest. Ball's loose. Cleared out nicely by Vieira. And they'll just dump it. as Elizabeth Steinmetz, who is back in after the yellow, just clears it out. And this is going to be Allison Teschendorf here with the throw in. And this one high down back into the Edgewood offensive area. Whistle. And a foul called on Corrigan. And this will be Sophie Boss now to put her right foot into it. She does. Sounded painful. Played back in. That's off of Vieira. Corrigan with it now. Corrigan trying to maneuver. Buys some space. Plays it back. Freshman loses it. Gets it back. Turns. And nice job by McMenny Hong there to just stay on the freshman. 
And there you see her immediately on Corrigan. Great job. Intensity picking up here in the waning minutes of this Cape Coast Conference Championship. Edgewood trying to win a third straight. Vieira trying to win their first in three years. I'd say we're probably right at about the 10 minute mark of the match here to go. This is Mallory Johnson with it. Another freshman. Kevin Smith, he tre definitely trusts his young players. You have to. Corrigan, not a freshman for sure. Corrigan, a senior. And the referees in the stands do not like the call. Yeah, that was a solid bump there. And coming in to take this one is going to be Steinmetz. And an opportunity for sure. At 35 out. Steinmetz. In front and headed over the center bar of the goal. And Vieira bending but not breaking. 1-1 one, one is the score. Right there in your living room. And it'll be Edgewood Ball. Figures are playing over in that corner. I would definitely say under 10 to go now. For the most of this second half, the pressure has been being applied by the Red Wolves. The lone goal In the later stages, though, came. Oh, look at that shot. And Kendall Mix again. Off the foot of Corrigan. And Kendall Mix keeps it a 1-1 game. That ball had a, a nice little arcing, spinning bend on it there. Nina Lopez with it. Now Nina works it into the high slot area. That's Gianna Lopez who has the lone goal for Edgewood. This is played in. Tough ball. Good hustle there by Lopez. And a whistle and it crosses the goal line. And it'll be Vieira ball and a goal kick coming here. About seven minutes to go. Once again, we want to thank our sponsor, Ms. Cartama of Dale Sorensen Real Estate. 
the information has been glued to the bottom of the screen throughout the broadcast here tonight on Brevard Sports Network. Don't forget, we'll be with you tomorrow for the boys' Cape Coast Conference Championship matchup between Vieira and Merritt Island. That'll take place at Merritt Island as Vieira puts the pressure on McMenny Hong. Opportunity here. And nice job by Ramsey to come out and shut it down. McMenny Hong, though, jumps on the loose ball. But, oh, that's a great play there. And the, the referee says, Vieira ball. Kenzie Ellison throws it in. McMenny Hong again. I tell you, he, 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 Ellis was playing a great game here tonight. And there's a perfect example how she forces a corner. She has done an outstanding job up and down this pitch tonight. A little far. That one crosses the far touch line off a of hawk foot, and it'll be Edgewood ball here with about six minutes, five and a half, six minutes to play, I would guesstimate. In regulation, we would go to overtime, and then the shootout if we don't have a final. Nice ball. Shot, and Ramsey is there that time. And she punts this one. Corrigan heads it backwards into Vieira territory, and here comes Edgewood with 309 or thereabouts to play. Ashton Wimber to throw it in. Olivia Boland, haven't called her name much tonight. Don't ever count her out. Olivia can make a big play at a big time. She is a big time player and they make big time plays, as you know, in big time games. And we play ping pong with the spectators. You can tell they're starting to work a little quicker now. This is Lopez with it. She's so fast into the middle of the field. Step for step with her, though, was, yeah, I can't say her last name, Nadia Umasiva, I believe. Nadia Umasiva. And here comes a corner in front. That's a loose ball that Wimmer nearly got a foot on but couldn't get loose. Lopez, nice. I tell you what, that was a good little shot and a save again by Mix. But let's not forget what Vieira's defense did right there in the middle of the field, forcing a ball out here and there. As Edgewood applies the pressure, and again, the bend, but don't break. And out of bounds. That's it. I got 50, I got it close to 50 seconds. <laughs> Ah, I love it. All right, so that's the end of regulation here. And we're going to go to – I'm thrilled with, uh, with that. That's funny. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> one, one, the simplest things in life sometimes make you happy, right? The two Giannas with the goals for Edgewood, Gianna Lopez with uh, a rebound off the top of the crossbar. And uh, the other Gianna Busey with the goal off of PK that came out and she buried the second chance opportunity there. And we are tied at one. And we'll step aside. We'll get the scoreboard adjusted. And we'll be right back. All right, headed overtime here, five and five, and then uh, PKs is what I'm told. So away we go with a one-one game. And you see the clock running here, so I figured it'd be about 90 seconds before they start, and uh, so we'll be at about the five-minute mark there by the time they start overtime i would think if not we'll be just slightly ahead but you get the gist of it gianna Busey, gianna lopez the goal scorers Vieira coming in at 11 and 1 he'd given up just one goal this year edgewood coming in at 8 1 and 1 had given up just six goals this year now Vieira's had an outstanding season there's no doubt the level of competition that Edgewood has played this year and teams like Pontre Vida and et cetera, et cetera. He has played some tough teams too, but this is uh this is this is a good good game here and a very strong performance for Cal Dixon's Vieira Hawks. Edgewood beefed up their schedule a little bit this year and trying to get over the proverbial wall that is Benjamin to them. And both of these teams pick up solid points playing each other here in this Cape Coast Conference Championship game. As both goalies tonight have been outstanding. I got to give the, the nod, though, tonight. Uh, so far, if I was going to pick a, uh, a Kartamba, Dale Sorensen, real estate player of the match tonight. It would it would have to be uh, Vieira keeper uh, Kendall Mix. She's had and, and and actually I would do a co-player of the game because even McMenny Hong has done outstanding tonight as well. 
So that's where I would be right now if the score were to end. If Fiera were to win, if Edgewood were, were to win tonight, not sure. Uh, I know Emma Ramsey's had a good night in goal as well. Liz Corrigan has played well as well tonight. So a couple of players to keep your eyes on in overtime for our Cartama Ramos crafting a realtor player of the match tonight. Oh, they're going to do PKs right out of the gate, huh? All right, looks like we're going to do PKs right out of the gate. I guess the Cape Coast Conference Championship is different. So, all right, well, that's outstanding. Especially when it's 50 degrees. We're going to get a winner. You know what? Here's what we're going to do. Let's probably get the roster. Sorry about that. All right, here we go. Your first shooter is going to be Nina Lopez. Lopez drills it. And there's one, two to one. I don't know who, I can't see the number. Oh, huge save by Emma Ramsey. Oh, they called the keeper left the line early. Wow. That happens almost every time, doesn't it? Terrible call. Terrible call. Ramsey, and that time she couldn't get it. As Nadia, or Sophie Boss, I'm sorry, drills it home. Shot and a goal. Andrea Toledo. And it's 2 1 in PKs. And here comes Megan Nadal, the junior. Nadal. And Nadal. Goes left side, and we're tied at two. All that's at stake here is a 38-game winning streak against Brevard County teams for Edgewood and their third straight Cape Coast Conference championship. If Vieira wins, it would be their first in four years. Oh! How about Kendall Mix with the save? V 
Veer with an opportunity here. And there's a goal, and this is a must here. As Brianna McCain drilled that one. Piper Miller now has got to make this. Or Vieira wins. Miller. Shot and a goal. This for the Cape Coast Conference Championship. Natalia Espling. With a chance to win it. Best playing shot. And it goes in. I guess we got one more shooter. Yeah, I'm sorry. One more shooter. My apologies. I didn't see the other shooter. Okay. So this is a must. Olivia Bolin, I believe, is the shooter. Obviously, if Kendall Mix makes his save, it's over. Shot and just catches the right corner there. And who is the next shooter here? Oh, it's going to be Kendall Mix herself, our player of the game to this point with an opportunity. Kendall Mix with a chance to cement it. Oh, she made the save! And we go on! Ramsey with the big save! And we play on. Wow. Boy, you talk about clutch. The senior keeper came up as clutch as clutch could be that time. And it looks like we'll get some. They're going to take a little break here. and We'll get some new shoot. I, I don't know if we're getting new shot. I don't, I, I don't know. I've never seen us go right to PKs. The two keepers talk. So we'll get five new shooters here, or five shooters. It looks like we got five new ones coming. Edgewood. Was down to their last opportunity there. They had to make the save. Ramsey had to make it. And she did on her fellow keeper, Kendall Mix. Double PKs here, if you will. And still tied at one. So... We'll call the shooters out as they come up, but it is five new ones. I see Elizabeth Corrigan out there as well, or is it five new ones? I can't tell. Yeah, it looks like five new shooters for each side. Looks like Corrigan, Taylor Reed, Mallory Johnson. So we got some freshmen in the mix. In the Cape Coast Conference Championship, but the goaltenders stay the same. Two outstanding evenings for Kendall Mix and Emma Ramsey as we get set for double PKs here.
Kevin Smith calling his shooters over. Cal Dixon, the coach for Vieira. Out for Vieira, I see Allison Teschendorf, as well as Catherine Orr, Eva McMenny Hong, Adele Baritsky, as Corrigan will shoot first. Where is it? Yeah, it's Corrigan. Corrigan, Liz Corrigan to shoot first, the senior. Kendall Mix has come up huge tonight. Can she do it again? Corrigan. Shot. Goal. And Edgewood, first shooter, scores. This is... Looks like Adele Baritsky for Vieira as Emma Ramsey. Shot and a goal and we're one one. Who will blink first? I think this is Elizabeth Steinmetz walking to the ball. Steinmetz. We'll put that precisely where she likes it. It goes in. Kendall Mix got her hands on it, but it went backwards and dropped in for the goal. The next shooter up is Mackenzie Ellison. Little drama here, huh? for the Cape Coast Conference Championship tonight. Shooter two, and that one soars over the crossbar, and that's it. That was sudden death, and it's over. Edgewood wins the Cape Coast Conference Championship for a third straight year. Sudden death PKs. As the girls are your Cape Coast Conference champions. And there you see Emma Ramsey, who's going to be our player of the game. For Vieira, nothing to hang their heads about here tonight. And that'll wrap it up from Vieira Regional Park as I think here comes the Cape Coast Conference trophy. As the Cape Coast Conference Trophy will be presented, Coach Kevin Smith. There it is. Get your trophy, girls. And your 2023 Cape Coast Conference champions, the Edgewood Red Wolves. That'll wrap it up from here tonight. 
Once again, sudden death PKs. What a what a, what a game. Once again, your final score, Edgewood 2, Vieira 1.